All right, welcome back. So, today, we are looking at my Traxxas Slash that I purchased from Philip Jolly. 150 mile an hour car, and it was sold to me with this body. So, right here is actually his signature that has pretty much faded away but that's Philip Jolly's signature um, and uh, it definitely didn't last on the body but this was one of the bodies he built for this car and it was sold to me and I've never run this car but he sold it to me he basically made a pass with it on a youtube video and uh put it up for sale and uh i purchased it let me uh pull the body off and i'll explain what's going on so when i received this car and like he had said in the video um he made a pass and put it up for sale um the way it was without i guess touching it when i received the car uh the car was broken um it had uh, one axle that apparently had broke, um, which you could tell because when you would roll the car, um, it wouldn't click because it wouldn't drive. So I spent the last uh, all day yesterday doing this body, and as you see, it's white underneath. So what I did was I masked this out, I taped it, cut it, and masked the top section myself I then shot two cans of translucent orange then I shot one can of translucent high metal flake silver to give it um, some sort of reflection in the light and that really helps on low light um, because low light will reflect off the paint um, so I did that and then I peeled the center white area and then shot a white backer which gave this dome area a, a white pop so that i could see the rc far away that's the plan and that's why i kept it orange um it's a little darker orange because he doesn't shoot a backer so it's the same color orange just shot with more coats So the next thing I'll have to do is I'll shoe goo basically this front area. I really need to shoe goo this up. I have to make the winglets up here. I cut this right in here where if you look at this body, what he ended up doing was cutting it off because this is a, a wing up. So he had trimmed that off and then made this plex and clear thing i didn't feel that you needed to do that so what i did was i cut it on each side and this was a wing let up i heated it here and here where the dimples are and then folded it down and then i just let it sit basically with some weight here piled into here I let it sit this way and cool and now I have the flat area now I still haven't cut off the end of it which I will but I need to make the little winglets and I might just pull them off the other body because they're falling off um, I'll probably take the one off make a template of it and then put it on here the whole goal was to kind of replicate um philip jolly's body because we know it works uh, for the 150 mile an hour now this has philip jolly's cap pack has a tp motor has some hot racing fans on it um, this motor has a big dent in the back which phil jolly told me about when he shipped it out is that the can has a dent but it still works um 
has a XLX um, ESC, uh, which he's tuned. Um, some GTR shocks on it. Um, basically, the way he set it up, it has a Servox servo. It has the aluminum center drive shaft. Basically, the way he ran his car with the sway bars front and rear. So, what I ended up having to do was... Uh, was fix a pin in one of the rear axles. Now, I don't know what axle that is, so I ended up having to make a pin um, in order to get it to drive off all four wheels. So, um, the other thing is, is that this front wheel is half the size. Well, it's thinner than this front wheel, and the rear tire is just chunked beyond belief and the reason this one is chunked is because this is where the axle had broken um and when the axle broke of course it went into a drift and chunked up the side so it also has some lead weight uh zip tied to the front uh shock tower um probably to keep it down um but i've never run this car um because I had to figure out some sort of tires for this thing. Um, I don't, it looks like the fronts are just cut down. Uh, rims with foams on them, like they were cut in half. Um, but I'm going to end up sticking full size tires on. So the body I ended up getting, the reason I'm explaining all this, because the body I ended up getting was not for a 10th scale, well, a little bit bigger, kind of for a 1A scale. And then I cut it down, even though it's the same body, it's a little bigger, um, because I'm gonna end up running full size tires in the front. Um, and the way he had it set up is it pretty much in turning would, uh, would almost rub the body. So I didn't want to take a chance um, since I plan on running this thing here very shortly. I want to make a pass in it since I've never made a, I've never ran this RC at all. I put my own uh, Futaba receiver in it and uh, made sure that it worked and that was it. But since the body was falling apart and the drive axle wasn't driving, I just kind of threw it on the shelf and left it there at that until i can get around now i've had this body a while i just haven't had the the want or need to put it together but i did watch flow pack he went ahead and uh ran his slash and he's really got me pumped about doing the slash again now the the slash was one of the first ones that i started doing speed runs with um and because i couldn't figure out how to get to the higher speeds past 110 uh with this i i don't even think i did that i think i was a 102 or 108 something like that or 109 uh, it took me forever to get to 100 mile an hour with my slash and i told several of them um i wanted to see what everybody else was doing and since philip jolly actually ran a slash chassis rather than a carbon fiber chassis because that's a big thing that uh i just feel if you're going to do it um if you're going to call it a slash or you're going to call it an arm and limitless once you've changed out 90 percent of the parts you, you can't call it uh a slash or a limitless anymore at that point it's just a full custom build with a bunch of random parts that you bought from other people so all these records that i'm seeing now that are called world's fastest limitless gt or world's fastest infraction gt um shock towers are changed um chassis are changed they're widened they're lengthened uh, the only thing i really see on them that are factory are the control arms um Axle shafts have been changed, center drive shafts have been changed, motor mounts have been changed, all the electronics have been changed, the body's been changed, the 
the body mounts have been changed the front bumpers have been changed like everything you look at on these you know 180 to 190 mile an hour cars they're not in my opinion limitless gts anymore uh, or infraction gts or whatever you want to call them but that's my opinion i have nothing to do with uh making any kind of rules to this i just feel that's how i was bamboozled when i got into trying to build a slash to do 150 mile an hour um and that's why i wanted to purchase one to see what is what why are these people calling it a slash when i'm taking a slash and trying to get it to 150 mile an hour but i can't um and i don't i don't know why so in buying this i learned a lot i learned what you're watching on the internet since they don't pop the lids and they don't show you what's going on i learned a lot and even if they do pop the lids you can't see it can't see what's going on anyway but i learned a lot buying this rc and then i started my speed run uh builds based off purchasing this car um and i still keep them as a vendetta or a limitless or an infraction i i build what it is and i call it what it is same thing with my slash my rustler they're literally ready to run that i purchased made some electronic modifications to it maybe made some diff, diff fluid changes uh changed out some gearing changed out motor mounts so that i can put my electronics into it and then run it that way uh, but as far as you know the drives i might change some drive shafts but the diff cases control arms uh, bearing carriers all that stuff belongs to the rc so that's why it took me so long to build the body on this that's why i didn't do a video yesterday is because i was in the middle of building this which took a lot of time on trimming cutting making modifications and making it as white as it is stiff it as it is because this is a delta plastics body but as you see i still have flex on these corners so i really have to shoe goo and stiffen this stuff up or this stuff's going to start to fold in at speed it's going to start wobbling around and uh i don't want that so i'm going to go ahead and shoe goo this body as soon as i can get some shoe goo and drywall tape it and then my plan is to get this one out there running so let's move on to the other two bodies i had painted this week be right back all right so moving on to my creighton which i did a video on this in the sledge showing the uh traxxas sledge bodies um paint it and uh remade and put onto my creighton exb so i'll show you this so we went ahead and threw the cage on the inside of it this is backed in a solid silver no metal flake because i wanted it darker with the translucent red if you haven't checked out that video on how i painted them i painted them the red and the blue together in one video but this is the body done with uh the decals on it now the armor stickers i went ahead all most of these stickers i got which comes with the creighton exp they give you a little sticker pack i used the sticker pack out of the um v4 creighton and the exp creighton um pamphlet so i used two sticker packs so that i can match right and left because they only give you one white sticker one black sticker same thing with the arma logo in this side they give you one white one black or, or one white one red which red wouldn't go on here very well the white and black really stands out so i used uh, two sticker packs on that put a windshield sticker and then of course don't just bash blast sticker that normally goes on the inside of the body i went ahead and stuck on this big flat area here and yeah put 6s because that's what i'll run this rig on is 6s and then this has got all the basher queen stuff in it so it's got the basher queen uh fan cover with the uh, mounting of the on and off switch um it's got the game changer goliath fan um with a heat sink 
and then uh, Game Changers uh, carbon fiber fan cover, which this setup's working great. Basher Queen's uh, strut tower brace. All the EXB stuff is still in it. This is Basher Queen's own uh, top brace now. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. The carbon fiber front and rear shock towers to take the sledge um, clipless body mounts and adapt it to this. Now, this rear one, I saw RC Pop Propaganda had asked that it was very hard to clip on his body. Um, I noticed the same thing once I installed the upper brace. Without the upper brace, the body clipped on fine. But once you install this upper brace and it stretches out the chassis, it was very hard to clip this rear body in. Now, I ended up shimming it behind here where this meets the shock tower. I had added um, Basher Queen's uh, servo spacers. She had some servo spacers that uh, she had sent, carbon fiber servo spacers. So I added them to the bottom. So I added the spacers to here and two on the opposite side to bring this a little forward so the body would clip in a lot easier. And that's how I clip the body in. Because it's tilted down a little bit, I really gotta give it a smack. But once it's smacked and it's on, it's not coming off, which I've shown. And that's why you'll see me pound on the rear of these bodies. I'll hit it here, I'll hit it here, make sure that they locked in, and then I'll pick it up to make sure that it is locked in. So let's move on to the sledge. Another body I had painted up this week. So it was a painting week for me and I didn't want to just put out a bunch of videos of me painting bodies uh, because I showed how this was done. A lot of people like the blue, a lot of people like the red. Some people are saying I need to do a white now, which I, I might. Um, I might buy the clip. I have the clipless body system for my V4. So I'll probably buy another paintable body and do that one in white. So that I have red, white, and blue. Um, but that'll come here shortly. I still got to buy another paintable body for that. But here's the sledge. I didn't run all the sledge stickers on it. Some of the carbon fiber pieces that they, stickers that they had on this, um, I didn't put on because on this dark blue, you really don't see it. I love the clear windows. So I'm keeping them both clear windows. I'm not tinting them. Um, it's dark enough. Plus, I can see in and see what's going on without popping the body. That's why I really like the clear windows. So, I'm going to leave this one. This is done. Both of them are done. Um, I might throw a 6S sticker on here, and I still have to throw license plates on both on the front from RC Guy Garage. So, I will be doing that. But, those are the two other bodies I painted up this week. So, this week I ended up painting three bodies. Um, I still have two more Cratons. Um, I got uh, the version 2 Creighton, which is sitting right back in there, um, full custom build. So I might do a clipless body on that, but I still have my V4. So let me, uh, I want to uh, finish talking about my speedrun endeavor. Here is my fully built chassis. Now, I totaled nine of these things. Um, these are the way I would set mine up. As you see, plastic drive axles. Um, I did look up the time. The fastest time I got with uh, the Slash was 119. Um, couldn't get any faster, but uh, I did run EMP rear motor mounts, but all the turnbuckles, all the axles, I ran RPM lower control arms for the flex. Um, and then I ran 17 millimeter uh, wheel adapters. And then of course I still kept, this has no shocks on it, but I kept the original uh, slash shocks. I would just use fuel tubing and shorten them up. I didn't put GTR shocks on it. I ran the stock front and rear um, shock towers and I ran stock differentials front and rear. So basically stock chassis, stock everything. 
I just basically changed out the electronics and then put the battery extension so I can hang them off the side and then I ran a GT body. Uh, whether it was a Corvette body or whatever I could find at the time. I, didn't, I wasn't really concerned about the body. And then finding these front um, bumpers took a little while for me because like I said, when I first started this, I didn't know how to set up a slash. I just knew I wanted to go 100 miles an hour with it. That was my goal. My end goal was, my end goal was to hit the 150 mile an hour. Like uh, for me, that would be my personal best with one of these. So that was my goal, which I never accomplished. I totaled nine of these things, trying to learn um, what to do, what not to do. And once I bought Philip Jolly's um, 150 mile an hour car, um, and saw everything that he was running in it like the Different drive shafts. I think they were techno drive shafts. I think I could be wrong but Learning that the majority of the parts that I was running trying to get to the 150 mile an hour and at that point spending I want to say almost ten thousand dollars Try just getting to 119 mile an hour um, It really burst my bubble to realize that it's not just gearing that you got to learn you you have to learn all the parts that need to be run on one of these rcs to hit the speeds that these guys are hitting on these speed runs and that's why i'm making this video is that i want to tell everybody out there that's new into the hobby that's trying to get information out there i tried to do the same thing on youtube i reached out to a bunch of people doing speed runs nobody ever commented it back um, the only time I got anybody to kind of comment back on YouTube um, was when I purchased Phil Jolly's car um, other than that and I, I made it clear the only reason I was buying it was to see what I'm doing wrong and I told this to Phil when I bought it is that I have to figure out what I'm doing wrong and why are these people going so fast and I feel like I've done everything I possibly could with the slash platform um, still keeping it a slash now I know I can change the shock towers I can change you know the axles I can change the length I know I can change all this stuff and make the RC better I know I can add weight um, this front bumper I think was for the rally slash um, so I learned doing that um buying the rally slash front bumper so that my body wasn't pushing in um i learned about the shoe goo and drywall tape early and that's how i would stiffen up my bodies um and then saga customs when it came to you know battery plates and other stuff i would always lean towards because i heard the name saga customs all the time i started buying his product um with like i said you know ten thousand dollars into it and uh buying every gear ratio out there <clears throat> because i didn't know gearing um trying to learn how to read a data log what is ripple what does a cat pack do like i was green when it when it got into speed runs then i ran across emp and i started buying his mount stuff because he's out here in california he's close to me and he would help me a lot um so I just want to put this video out there. Don't get discouraged. Um, I'm no professional. Um, I'm just telling you what I went through as a newbie get, trying to get to 100 miles an hour. Don't get discouraged. Ask the questions. I'll help you as much as I can. Uh, I have no secrets, whether it's gearing or whatnot. Like I said, I'm not close to what these guys are running. I'm not going after any records for anything. I'm just doing speed runs um, to do 100 miles an hour. And that's why the Vendetta was so impressive, the Limitless was so impressive, because I bought those, changed out a couple things. They're still Vendettas, they're still Limitlesses, and I've, you know, I've reached my 100 mile an hour goal. I'm up to 146 or seven, I think now. Uh, I'm out of road. But I'm gonna send this slash because at this point, you know, just keeping it around on the shelf. I'm not really learning anything else. Speed run time is here. So I'm gonna get out. I do have a bunch of spare parts for slashes. So if I break stuff, 
it's going to get slash parts back on it whatever's in it is going to end up coming out uh, because i don't know what parts are what so and that's why i don't buy um speed cars anymore that are fully built because after purchasing this one and seeing all the damage and seeing all the parts loose and falling apart there's a reason why most get rid of their speed cars after a certain amount of time a lot of guys don't even sell them because they know that they are pretty much useless at that point they're perfect for newbies trying to get to 100 miles an hour kind of like i was but to try to go you know 150s 180s i can't remember what phil was at this time i think he was 170s 160s something like that at the time that i purchased that but you know it's best to do it on your own um and then definitely for me it's keeping it whatever it is if this is a ready to run world's fastest ready to run then it's got to have some ready to run parts on it it can't be a fully modified speed build because then it's not a ready to run no more it's not the world's fastest ready to run just because you started out with a ready to run and most of the guys aren't even buying limitless rollers anymore um they buy them to strip them down for some parts um but at this point they're just buying carbon fiber chassis all the aftermarket stuff that they know that they need and then they build it from scratch uh, kind of like Roz and everybody else out there doing these high, high speed runs, which more power to them. I can't wait to see 200 miles an hour. But when the title and the clickbait says world's fastest ready to run, I know it's total BS. Hopefully you guys know too. Don't get discouraged. Get out there, do some speed runs. You're going to enjoy it. Um, and hopefully, you know, I can give you some insight onto reaching that 100 mile an hour goal without having to waste ten thousand dollars like i did but there we go like comment subscribe we'll catch you guys on my next video get out there and do some rc well hopefully you stayed too uh long enough to see this because this is going to come at the end of the video i wanted to give some sort of update on the giveaway um two weeks i will be drawing a name to give the limitless away even though we're not close to the 15,000 subscribers, I'm going to go ahead and give this thing away anyway. I'm going to hold off on the crawlers until we hit 15,000 su subscribers, but the Limitless will be going away. So just wanted to give an update on that, and I figured I'd throw it at the end of this video because the true subscribers that watch my videos and watch them daily, you'll be able to see what's going on with the giveaway. And... It's perfect because this is why I started the Limitless giveaways is to build a 120 mile an hour RC and give it away to somebody so that they don't have to spend tons and tons and tons of money to learn how to do speed builds. So there we go. Like, comment, subscribe. Hopefully that answers everybody's questions because I see it in, in the comment section of every video I do. People saying, I can't wait for you to give it away. Um, why haven't you given it away? Um, I'm gonna win. I, I read the comments. I see you guys. It will be given away If you would have watched the first video you would have known at 15,000 subscribers. This was When this was supposed to be given away, which was supposed to be the end of last month but the channel fell off and went back to a crawl um, And the subscriber counts not moving anymore So I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing away anyway um, Just so that we can get this part of it out of the way and at 15,000 subscribers, I will be giving away and drawing the names on the three crawlers that are going to go away. Like I said, uh, the one crawler has got a ton of money into it. More money than this because it has trailers and tracks and all kinds of stuff with it. Um, but we're going to go ahead and give this thing away. Um, like I said, this will be no radio in this one, no controller. So just an update on the giveaway. Figured I'd attach it to the um, talking about the speed builds and the slash builds and how I got into doing speed runs <clears throat> and how much money I spent on speed runs. Now $10,000 was just on the cars I totaled because it's about $1,000 to put a slash back together with everything back into it every time you totaled it. And I'm telling you, nine times out of 10, everything in it was totaled, even the gears. when 
you're close to 90 miles an hour and you roll this thing down a road on a plastic RC, there's pretty much nothing left to it. So I had to replace everything nine times. Now that doesn't count when I would slide and just wreck it or ruin tires every run or break a control arm or bust up the front where I could repair it. That was just nine of them that I ended up replacing. But there we go guys, get out there, do some speed runs. Get yourself 120 mile an hour RC, 130. Um, I think I have this one set up to 120, even though the tires won't go there. Um, throw on some foams and it should do it. Uh, or even throw on some hoons and it'll do 120. But there we go. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you guys on my next video. Thanks for watching.